What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have awesome news and a really fun trick today. Microsoft has just released the native small multiples visual and it is awesome. So I'm gonna walk you through how to use that, but specifically I'm gonna show you a trick in order to make your small multiple categories dynamic. For example, we are currently looking at a small multiples chart with small multiples categories as this order method type, but I'm gonna show you how you can set it up to where if you select a different category, such as retail or country, your small multiples category will change as well. And then finally, retailer type, we have a completely different category in there. And you can add as many categories to the selector as you want and make it dynamic for multiple categories. This is extremely easy to set up and takes the small multiples visual to the next level. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into a raw file and start setting this up. In order to get a small multiples visual up and running, you have to make sure to enable it in the preview settings if you are using this close to its release date of December 2020. If you're watching this in the future, you probably don't need to turn on that preview feature and when I say small multiples visual, I guess I'm using that term incorrectly. It's really just the bar charts or line charts currently that have the small multiples option with them. So let's use a basic clustered column chart and let's go ahead and throw something in here. I already have a total sales measure. I'll throw that in my values and I will use quarter as the axis. And the only thing that I have to do in order to make this a small multiples visual is to add a categorical column into the small multiples field. For example, retailer type, I will throw that in there and I have a nice small multiples visual. We can change the grid layout by going to the formatting settings and grid layout and choosing a different number of rows and columns. I'll do three rows. So now we have multiple visuals contained within this single clustered column chart. And that is awesome. Great job to Microsoft for pushing this out. Now let's get into the trick on how we can make these categories dynamic via slicer selection. All we're going to need is a single disconnected table that we are going to create and a single measure as well. Firstly, let's go ahead and look at the data to see what we can work with. Uh, in the data view, all of my data is within this single table here, but this will work in case you have fact tables and dimension tables. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it simple with a single table. Uh, we see that we have multiple categorical columns that we can choose from. For example, order method type, we have multiple different categories of orders. We have multiple different retailer types. Um, and another one, another good one is retailer country. So all of these categorical columns I want to use uh, to basically switch dynamically within that small multiples visual. You could actually go with um, any of these categorical columns. But let's go back to our report canvas. And the first step is to create that disconnected table. So this disconnected table needs to have a certain format. It needs to have a single column that's going to allow the user to select uh, basically which selection they want to show. And then it needs a second column that's going to contain all of the individual categorical values from our original table. If that seems a little bit confusing, it'll make more sense as we start to sketch it out. So I am going to call this my slicer table and I'm going to set that equal to, and let's actually just do uh, one of these column selections. Um, basically, let's start with a select columns function and I want to take the distinct values from a single category. Let's start with my retailer type, which is what we're currently showing in the small multiples visual. I wanna create a new column. I'm gonna call this selection. And I'll give that a value of a retailer type. And let's close it off there. And um, this is just kind of one step into here, but I wanna show you what this looks like currently. So basically it's just this one uh, column here that's called selection that says retailer type. And this is one value per distinct value of our retailer type. Um, that'll make more sense as we add the second column. I'm gonna call the second column category. And I'm simply gonna set that equal to retailer type. So now as we click enter, we have two columns here, selection, retailer type, all the way down and category, the individual distinct categories within our sales table. So for retailer type in our sales table, we have these distinct categories. Those are the exact same ones that we will now see on our new slicer table. So uh, we need to do this a couple times for every category that we wanna bring in. So we can union all of these individual tables together. So I'm gonna go ahead and union. I need to make sure my indention is looking good. So I want to union multiple tables together. So let's go ahead and copy this one and just paste it a couple times and make sure we put some commas behind them. So the other uh, columns that I wanna use, um, I wanna use that retailer country column. So I'm going to change the name of my selection column to retailer country. 
and category, I want this to be retailer country. And also, instead of retailer type for the third one, I want to use the order method, order method type. So I'm going to paste that in the name of my selection column and the column that is driving my category column. And one thing I want to change is I want this to be the exact same spelling and capitalization as my column. And let's go ahead and in that, see what that looks like. So it looks pretty similar two columns, selection column. So basically we have our distinct categories for those three categories we've chosen from our sales table. And we have a selection column that is gonna be the same all the way down for that specific category selection. So we have our familiar retailer types. For retailer country, we have all of the countries that are available in the sales table. And for order method type, we have all of the order methods. So that's all you need. Let's go to the modeling view. We can see that this is disconnected from the sales table. So now if we go ahead and create a new slicer and throw in our selection, we now have this slicer. It looks pretty good. Let me get out of this DAX editor. So that looks pretty good there. Um, quickly, I'm going to make this a single select. And this isn't going to drive anything currently, but it does look nice. It gives us three selections for those categories. All right, the last step that we need to accomplish is to create a new measure that's going to use the selection from our slicer table. So I'm going to call this uh, total sales uh, dynamic category. And firstly, I want to capture which selection is being made in the slicer table. So I'm going to call that var category selection. And I'm going to set that equal to selected value of my slicer table selection. And by default, if uh, multiple are selected or none are selected, I can give this a default value. I want to default to retailer type. This shouldn't matter because we have single select on, but I want to cover my basis. And finally, let's return. And let's return a switch statement, switch true. And let's check each condition. Let's check if our category selection equals retailer type then I want to calculate my total sales, which is already a measure. Now let's use the handy treat as function. And I'm going to pass in for the first parameter values of my slicer table category. And I want to check the values of my slicer table category, which as we can think through, if this is retailer type, it's just going to be those six or seven individual retailer types. We want to check that and filter against my retailer type column from my actual sales table. So this is going to apply filters to the sales table on the retailer type column, just passing through the columns that are available in my category uh, column on my slicer table, which are just going to be those six or seven retailer types. So that's all we need to do for this line here. I'm gonna copy this just a couple more times and we'll be done. Let's paste that in a second time and a third time. So now the only thing we need to change is instead of retailer type, let's do country. And instead of retailer type, it's country here. Instead of retailer type, it is uh, order method type. Order method type. And this is order method type. So that's all we need to do. So those three selections, if it is retailer type, calculate total sales, but specifically use our category field with our retailer type selections as the filters for the sales retailer type uh, column. And let's click enter. And now let's just throw our new measure into our values instead of our total sales. And we see this isn't working 100%. That's because we still have our retailer type and the small multiples. We need to get rid of that and use our category from uh, our disconnected slicer table. So now we have order method type. Let me go ahead and sort this by descending so we see some good data here. Uh, so order method type, we see our small multiples for web order types, telephone order types. If we switch to retailer country, we're now saying United States, United Kingdom, Switzerland. And if we switch to retailer type, we see our different store types. So that's working exactly as expected. Really cool, really fun to do. Um, the small multiples visual is amazing, but it's even cooler when you can make the categories dynamic. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video. If you haven't checked out my training over at training.bielite.com, go check that out. We have some great courses on Power BI, DAX, Alteryx, and SQL currently. Hope to see you there.